Hi folks, Dave here. This is a quick vlog update from my solar workshop about future plans. Just to be clear, my solar workshop is already operating off the electrical grid, but I'm planning some major upgrades to the system. The honest truth is those who claim to be off-grid and homesteading are tied into and dependent on the grid just like everybody else. That's reality. That said, having multiple battery banks on my property the past few years has been a very good capability to have, and it means having power even during hurricanes and such. I have not shown it before, but my main property already has a good size off electrical grid solar power system, and I'm really thankful for it. But the solar workshop has had a bit of a power shortage. In the next few months, I hope to start solving that issue. It's a process. First step is getting a new inverter, so let's take a look at that. I just wanted to do a quick video about this inverter. This is not really a review. I bought this inverter, and I bought it because it's a sub $200 low frequency or LF inverter. This is not a high frequency inverter. I've been trying this inverter for quite a while now, and mainly with an air conditioner, and I'm quite impressed with its performance, and I hope that it will last, well, pretty long. Uh, hopefully longer than what some of the reviews on Amazon are saying. Now I don't know what the longevity of this inverter is going to be, but I thought I'd go ahead and show you the insides of it, take a look at it. This is the brand name, I don't know how to pronounce that, Amp NVT. And the first thing that struck me about this inverter is it's all metal in the case and it's very heavy. And a low frequency inverter generally is quite heavy. Anyway, I've already taken the screws out, so I won't um, bore you with that. I'm going to go ahead and open the cabinet here. And it has an RS-485 interface, I believe. What I need to do is take this cable off. I had to remove the RS-485 cable because it's just too short. And I won't be using that right now anyway. Just try not to pull on the cables too hard here. So the front comes off like that. And you can see the first thing anyone who knows LF inverters would notice is this big, chunky, massive Toriel transformer here. Let me get the camera off here and see if I can take a closer look at it. Okay, so here's a look at the inside of the unit. And remember, this is a sub $200 inverter, which I think is amazing. I don't know how they do it. So here's the Toradol Transformer. Very big, very chunky. And it's wrapped in plastic. And over here we have some electronics. There's actually, uh, this is the part that uh, actually takes the DC and turns it into a sine wave. Got a big inductor there or a filter. Looks like a filter. It's hard to tell. Anyway, I must say that the build quality on the inside of this inverter is pretty good. Uh, I don't have a problem with it. And one of the complaints on the Amazon reviews is the hot neutral and outlet was reversed. That's really not a problem because if it's reversed, all you have to do is come down here to this outlet, which is right here, and just swap the cables on those uh, lugs there. It's not really a big deal. All the wiring looks pretty legit. I don't have a problem with that and the wires inside and these connections here look pretty decent they're tight so really for under two hundred dollars it's hard to believe you can get a low frequency inverter let's hook this thing up to an oscilloscope and see what kind of waveform we get to run my bench power supply i'm going to be using the e600 this thing is becoming very handy and i got to get some cables for the bench power supply here I'm not using my normal recording setup today, so I'm having to do everything one-handed. Okay, so let's set it to uh, something like 13 volts will be fine. It takes quite a surge on startup, so I'm just going to use this small battery here. This is a lithium iron phosphate 12 volts 4 cell. Since I'm just running a test on the inverter, I don't have to worry too much about it. And then I will put the uh, bench power supply on there to give it a charge. All right, the bench power supply is charging. All right, I got some more light plugged into the uh, E600 here so I can see what I'm doing. Let's go ahead and turn this inverter on and see what happens. All right, I put this uh, Gochi Fix 3-in-1 on the oscilloscope mode here. Let's take a look at the output. <clears throat> It looks like a sine wave. Let's see, time. Yeah, there's a little noise, but of course the oscilloscopes are very sensitive to any kind of noise, and I'm just jamming the probes in, so. 
It's certainly a sinusoidal waveform. It looks fine to me. It looks stable. I don't see any flat spots. Of course, this is not under a load. So just because it looks good on an unloaded state doesn't mean it's going to look the same under a load. But based on the performance of this unit while it was running an air conditioner for many hours straight, um, I'm pretty impressed with it overall. And I don't know how they can sell it for under $200, but we'll see how long it lasts. There's a look at the panel in the front. It's a bit hard to record when it lights up, but you can see. So this is also a grid interactive inverter. It's a charger, and it can switch in utility mains as well as uh, use the battery to create 120 volts AC. Right now, I'm just using it in battery mode. There's your battery voltage, 120 volts out. Input is zero volts because there's no grid power, 0% load. It has a lot of different menus. The fan runs all the time when it's under load, and I'm okay with that. That's a smart way to do it. Some people complain about the fans on these inverters. I don't know why they do. An inverter like this, especially with a toroidal transformer, you want to make sure that hot air does not build up inside the unit because if it does, it slowly soaks the components with more and more heat. And that transformer, which is right over here by this vent, eventually it's not going to be able to hold any more heat and it can start overheating. And that's how you burn the windings out. Now this inverter is rated for 1200 watts. I wouldn't run it at 1200 watts. I would run a refrigerator or a freezer or a 5000 BTU air conditioner on this all day, no problem. I'm not sure I push it much harder than that. For under $200, I think it's a pretty good deal. Unfortunately, I haven't had a lot of time to make videos like I want to, but I did want to show you this workbench that I built. It's a fairly basic affair of just 2x6s with some recycled 2x4 that I got from my shed. And then I put a shelf overhead because I have endless boxes and I just need to pile them up somewhere. And that's just uh, going to be a new place that I can record videos if I'm able to get to them. It's too early to tell how long this inverter will last, whether it will have the longevity that I need it to, but it's going to be mounted on a board soon, and it will go into full-time use. It has these nice uh, ears here for mounting on a board, which I'll be using. You can hardwire it into the AC, so this can go to your uh, breaker box, and this can go to your uh, load center if you want to. Right now I'm not using AC input. If you don't want to do any AC input, you can just take some wires here and connect it to your circuit breakers or your load panel your load center, or you can just connect it to an AC outlet. And it's got a terminal block hidden in behind here. Really nicely done, I must say. The cables did not come with it. They had much thinner cables, which I'm not going to complain about. I get it. They're expensive. These are cables that I bought. And I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how this thing performs. The fan is, uh, as far as I can tell, always on, which is okay. So I hope that it will last a long time. I will be running air conditioning with it and a few other small loads, probably a freezer as well. One of the reasons why I got this inverter is that my shop is essentially off the grid. I uh, put that in quotes, off electrical grid. I don't see it the way most people do. <clears throat> Just because I run my shop on batteries isn't truly off the grid, but that's what I do. And you can see that all these lights that I'm running, they're all powered by solar. And what I've done is I've cleared out a spot here, and I'm hoping to get a forklift load of batteries. That's something that's a work in progress. And there's going to be another charge controller two to three inverters here in this area and this has been here for a while I've never actually been able to use it like I wanted to and the batteries <clears throat> eventually are probably gonna go somewhere here there really isn't room here originally I was gonna make this a battery shelf and have batteries in here but I think they're gonna actually have to be mounted somewhere else and all the inverters and whatnot will be mounted on this board so just to be clear this shop this workshop I call it a solar workshop is running off the grid I put that in quotes because even though it runs off the grid, I still have to depend on the grid like everybody else who says they're off grid uh, to do pretty much everything seven days a week. If everything goes well, right over here in this corner here, these shelves are going to be removed and there's going to be an absolute forklift load of lithium iron phosphate batteries right over there. When I say forklift load, I don't mean a couple of small cells. We're talking huge. Now the floor in this shop should be able to hold the weight of such a large quantity of batteries. It is, uh, I believe... I want to say it's 4,000 PSI concrete, but I'm not sure. So my plan was to make this whole area a battery area, massive amount of batteries. I may build racks, I may build shelves, I don't really know. Those shelves are just there because I need something there to hold all the stuff until I'm ready to move the batteries in. They're going to come on pallets, and I don't know when I'll have them exactly, but I'll certainly post an update on this channel when I do have them. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this quick look at my new inverter and future plans for the uh, off-grid solar workshop. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. And just to be clear, I bought this inverter with my own money, so technically it's not a review. 
and I've just started using it. Seems to work well so far. We'll see how it lasts. Thanks for watching, folks.